What's up everyone? So I got this new awesome fish tank rack build uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you guys. I hope you guys find it very useful. I'm gonna try to keep all the materials descriptions or cut list down below in the description. Um, and also I wanna like, warn you guys, there is some power tools involved. So please use caution if you're gonna attempt this yourself and always uh, be safe. But this is what it looks like and I hope you guys enjoy. So I'd like to share the end result first. This is the rack that I built, and this is the one I will be showing you how to build in this video. So without further ado, let's get right to the build. It's a beautiful day today, nice weather. It's a perfect day to be doing some outside work. Now, you can see I got plenty of wood here, so I went and got a bunch of that from Home Depot. It cost me about $3 a piece uh, to grab this wood, and uh, they are eight foot two by fours. They didn't have six foot two by fours, which would have been a little bit better for me in some cases. You know, I would have probably bit, divided it up uh, half, eight foot and half, six foot. But uh, yeah, they didn't have any at six. One thing that I did want to point out is when you're at the store selecting your lumber, make sure you check it for straightness. You don't want something that's too bowed or crooked. Uh, and you're just simply going to do that by just holding it up on the side and just looking right down the path to make sure it doesn't look like it's too messed up to use. Um, that could be kind of important when you're talking about fish tanks because yeah, a big bow could uh, cause your uh, fish tank to essentially crack. So first things first, we're just going to go down the cut list, go ahead and cut our pieces. You can see we got nine, nine and a half inch. Uh, that'll just be what's left over when we cut these larger pieces. I got four at five foot eleven and a half and two at five foot four inches. So we'll go ahead and cut those and then we'll start preparing it to actually be put together. I gotta cut the groove for the 2x4 to sit in because what we're gonna do is have it sit flush within the 2x4. These are my vertical pieces, uh, my two 5 foot 4 pieces. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. 4, I gotta get out my paper, I can't remember. These are my 4 at 5 foot 11 and a half, right? And these are basically the ones that hold the, the, whole, the whole rack vertically. Now, as bro, let's see. I want to come up one foot three and a half because I essentially want about 15 inches available underneath my tanks so I could put storage and such. So now I have my line here and I'm just going to put my 2x4 on there so I know the thickness of it because we're going to have to groove this out so the 2x4 will fit inside of it. So now I have a spot where I will make my cut. Now I'm going to want to set my saw depth to the depth of the 2x4. And I'm basically going to cut a bunch of lines in here and so that I could go ahead and chisel it out and then just clean it up with a wood rasp. frustrating uh, doing it with a portable saw a little battery powered saw not a recommended uh, thing please avoid that because it it stunk I didn't it, it couldn't do the job if you're gonna do it if you're gonna do use a, a little saw like that go ahead and just do one board at a time uh, but yeah this is another day I got another saw and this is one I've had but I didn't know where it was because I just moved in and I haven't unpacked it yet finally found it back to work 
So for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, this is what a wood rasp looks like. And you're basically just going to use this to file down any rough edges that you left behind with the saw cuts. For screws, I went with a two and a half inch prime guard exterior screw just to try to prevent any rusting from any water that might leak onto my rag. I highly recommend pre-drilling uh, as you want to try to avoid splitting your wood on the edges. So if you pre-drill and then put your screws in, it should help a lot to avoid that situation from occurring. Here I went ahead and decided to test my tanks to make sure they fit before I went ahead and completed the whole rack. Uh, and as you can see here, it looks really good. Uh, edges are lining up. Middle is perf perfectly in the middle. And uh, it looks like all four edges of the tanks will be supported. Now you can see that the cardboard is still on there. So I will have a little extra play as planned. Now, I wanted to make sure you guys understood about splitting again. So with the screws, when you have them, you want to try and put them right in the middle. So you're essentially staggering them. If you put them uh, together just like this, uh, you'll end up splitting the wood because it's almost like lining them up to where it'll split. You can see right here, there's a crack in the wood already. And if I were to put that in there, it would definitely break, break that uh, edge. So I went ahead and bought some wood stain uh, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. The red chestnut is a little darker than I expected, but it looks good. On top of that, it was fairly simple to put on. Uh, basically just paint it on, let it dry for a little while, and then you're going to wipe it down for any excess paint stain that might still be on the wood. So I'm very pleased with the way this rack turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well, and I hope you like the way it looks. Uh, if you guys could, please leave me a thumbs up, a uh, like for the video. New, new people, please subscribe to the channel. I will have uh, future projects that I will share with you as I continue to build up a wonderful fish room here. And um, until next time, guys, see you.